Welcome back to the Steve Mulsberg Show, everybody. I'm Ed Berliner, sitting in for Steve today. A very happy Passover to all of our viewers. Uh, you may, of course, have seen the story recently, talk of a union for college football players at Northwestern University. Now, hang on a sec, because this is not going to be a sports discussion here, because that's for another day altogether. But here you are now, the parent, very likely, of some wonderful, young, bright snowflake somewhere, just waiting for him or her to get into college and then become a future leader of tomorrow and all that education they're going to learn. <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay. Now, we're going to go have to, sorry, bring us a little bit down to reality here in just a moment, if you will, because what's going on between educators and students and college courses, if you really pay attention sometime, and especially if you're a student, you'll find out that half the time, what are you learning, if anything? Joining us right now, where she has written a wonderful column on this, she is an author and columnist for the New York Post. Naomi Schaefer Riley joins us here on the Steve Molesberg Show. Naomi, thanks for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me. How well did I hit it there, all those brilliant little snowflakes and parents just desperate, and so many parents have no clue what they're getting into because, as your article points out, it's not just athletes getting screwed. College screws everybody. Right. Well, this is the, this is the month where those fat envelopes arrive, and parents and students are so excited to find out about which school of their dreams has admitted them. Um, unfortunately, uh, the next thing that will arrive is a college catalog that looks like it's about the size of a doorstop. And unfortunately, it's a completely intellectually incoherent document. Um, basically, you know, we've gotten rid of general education requirements the board and so now you know a typical semester for a college student will be a little animal behavior animal behavior here a little intro to psychology here a little business here and if when you put all these things together you know a little French literature there um, they will make no sense together and will probably have no relevance for your life after college unfortunately well it, it, what you've also touched on is is something that I think you could say from the grade school level at some schools the high school level certainly that we have reached a point in our society where education is not educating the kids to be ready for what they're going to face on the outside. It, it still is almost as if college is this cloistered little environment where only our little brand of oxygen actually exists and, and nothing else exists outside of it. Where does that come from? That has to come from somebody setting that. Right. Well, the incentives are all wrong. So what do students want out of college? They want a four-year party, four party that's paid for by their parents. <laughs> and what do faculty want out of the college experience? That's an interesting question. It turns out, and I found this in my book that I wrote about why we should get rid of tenure, uh, called The Faculty Lounges, um, faculty actually just want to publish. They want to publish obscure research, and they get rewarded financially for doing so. So what happens then is that they turn around and say they've written, say they've written you know an entire dissertation or a book about costumes in the court of Louis the 16th and they decide well you know why do any more work I'll just teach an undergraduate course on that regardless of whether it's helpful for the students who are actually taking the course um, so the incentive structure in higher education I think is all wrong so when you said that there should be no more tenure I would imagine that you had to go out and buy a flak jacket a flak jacket of course and <laughs> make sure that you were nobody knew where you lived anymore after that because I can oh, imagine yeah, I academic. can hear teachers oh. saying wait a minute we need tenure we need the security that we have right now but isn't that still just like saying if you do the job you're gonna stay end the story right well I, I advocate for what the rest of us mostly work on which is you know multi-year renewable contracts and when we don't you know live up to the terms of our contract then we don't get the contract renewed and the rest of the world somehow seems to manage to get by with that but I think one of the biggest reasons to get rid of tenure is because it really incentivizes this publish or perish mentality and it focuses faculty much less on what's going on in the classroom and giving students the tools that they need to succeed um, and even the tools that they need to become good citizens um, and instead just focuses on you know how they can get published in an obscure academic journal all right so let's take this down to the level of what you said with envelopes arriving right now uh, you're a parent and you're getting your kid ready to go to college right now and you want your kid to get a really good education your kids let's face it at 17 18 years of age how many of us really know what we wanted to do in the first place but you want your kid to get a, a good education you don't want to waste money what should you be looking for? What are those red flags that say, this is a college that's wasting my money? Well, I think there are a couple of interesting rankings out there that have appeared to compete with U.S. News. Um, one that's interesting is put together by the American Council of Trustees and Alumni. It's called ACT UP. Huh? And, um, and, the, the, and the, the report is called, What Will They Learn? And it actually goes through most of the major universities in the U.S. and 
asks about graduation requirements, like will this person be required to take a basic history course? Will they be required to master writing in some way? Will they be able to take a basic statistics course? Will they be required to? And I think you know that really gives you a good substantive sense of the curriculum. There's another ranking put out by Forbes magazine uh, that looks at bang for your buck. It compares um, you know starting salaries for graduates coming out of a lot of these schools, and I think that's something a lot of parents will be interested in. It also looks at student loan debt, which is a very uh, important issue for a lot of students who are uh, matriculating now. There was a Gallup poll done in February, and I want to show everybody the numbers on this because I, I think it says it partially looks to a little bit of what the discussion is here today. Finds that 14 percent of Americans and only 11 percent, this is stunning, 11 percent of our business leaders, they agree that graduates have the necessary skills and competencies to succeed in the workplace. That's 89 percent who say they don't have enough to get out there. So knowing all that right now, what is it that you can do to wade through this morass of classes you don't need in order to become better educated for society today? Well, um, I think you need to steer clear of a lot of the sort of politically correct area studies. Um, ah, politically you know, correct. My goodness, how did I know that that phrase would walk uh, in there somewhere yeah, when it well, comes I to education? Yeah, I would steer clear of, you know, the gender studies, the ethnic studies, and the rest of those. I don't think you're going to get a substantive education in those. Um, but I would also, you know, I think it's important to find, you know, there are a few good faculty here on campuses uh, around the country, and I think it's important to find those faculty who care about substantive education and ask, you know, their opinion. You know, what classes should I sign up for that will actually teach me something? And I think students really know who those faculty are. Um, they're just a little bit reluctant to go ask the really difficult professor for advice. But I think also parents should really be attaching some strings to those tuition checks and saying, you know, what what classes are you signing up for this semester? I want to actually see, and I, and I care about where my money is going. But don't they tell you sometimes the schools say you must take this, and you have to take this, and you can't get a, a degree without this? So aren't the kids really stuck in many ways? Unfortunately, um, most colleges don't tell you enough of that, of, of what you need to take. And so college, you know, college catalogs are like those old choose your own adventure books, you know, <laughs> where you have an 18 year old just sort of flipping through the pages and saying, oh, this looks fun. But, you know, 18 year olds don't know what they don't know. And so I think, you know, a little bit more adult guidance here would be very useful. I got about a minute or so left here and you mentioned something else, two words in there that I've know certainly from being around college athletics for many years, grade inflation. If I had a penny for every time I've seen grades that have gone up and been inflated when they didn't deserve it. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, the, the percentage, I think one report recently found that something like 40% of the grades given at the top 200 colleges are in the A range. Um, I think what's happening here is that administrators and faculty are doing a real disservice to students. You know, they're, they're A, not giving students an incentive to work harder, but B, they're not even giving employers any sense on which to judge the students. I mean, if everybody gets an A, how do you know who to hire? That would seem to me to be the, the biggest problem here is employers now are looking at kids who have educations, but unfortunately they can't do the job. We just don't teach skills anymore, correct? It's all theory at this point. Doesn't well, it seem to be that way? True. That's absolutely true. And the skills, by the way, you know, people always say, oh, you never know what the jobs of tomorrow will require. I can guarantee you they'll require that you know how to write a coherent paragraph and that you understand some basics of math. Those things don't change no matter how technology does. I had about 30 seconds or so left here. So let me ask, in all of the research you did and all the discussions that you did, did you find two or three colleges that actually seem to get it and get it right? Uh, you know, I think there are several colleges that get it right. And like I said, I would refer people to those rankings I mentioned, Forbes and ACTA, because I think that, you know, different colleges are good fits for different people. But I think in each category, you can find some decent schools out there with some faculty who care about students. Uh, we can only hope so as parents are looking at those bank accounts right now and saying, honey, do you realize how much we're spending? Don't party all the time. Uh, that seems to be part of the discussion between kids and parents always. Uh, Naomi, thank you so much for bringing this to our attention. We're going to get the parents out there to see if we can raise the next generation of really intelligent kids. I hope so. Thanks very much. Great. Thanks so much. Naomi Schaefer-Riley from the New York Post. Uh, it's true, and I see this happen with a lot of parents all the time, especially this time of year. Where are you going? What are you doing? And what are you studying? You have to realize that you've got to get ready for life after college. There is a life after college. There's also a life after we take a break. As the Steve Mulsberg Show, Ed Berliner sitting in, continues right here on Newsmax.